Let's take a look at a book here, and this is a book by a single author. So this could be very straightforward, right? We have the author's name. So again, last name first, then the first name, then the middle name. Again, remember, we're always using the initial and a period and a space. We never write out the whole first name. We never write out the whole middle name. Here is the year. Computer Addiction, A Study of Computer Dependency. This is the name of the book. And you can see that the name of the book in this case is going to be, again, lowercase, following the lowercase. Now, if you have a colon or if you have a question mark or some other punctuation, then after that, that next letter will be capitalized. That's kind of a regular English rule. But here we need to pay attention because it's very easy to get confused. And then we go ahead and we have a period at the end of that title. Now we're going to have the city, London, England. So, comma, city, colon, publisher. Taylor Francis is the publishing company. What if this was an electronic version of this book? then we would follow almost the same, except at the end, we would say here, this is the DX Reader version. So here we, you see this? Bracket, open bracket, close bracket. What are those brackets for? Those brackets are for special information, extra information. So you may say something like the Kindle version, or here, the DX version, or this may be the web version. Something special that doesn't fit with APA, but is good for the user, uh, the reader, to help them see where this source came from. And then we have the URL. So right there is the whole URL. And we do not, no period at the end. No, no period at the end because we've already finished over here. This is kind of the ending. And then this retrieve from is extra information. Okay, let's look at another example here. Chiraldi, that's the last name. Then we have the first name, the middle name, the year. The post-traumatic stress disorder source book. And again, we have a colon inside the book name. We copy it from the book. We don't make that up. And here, what do we have? We have the brackets again, the open bracket and the closed bracket. What are they for? Giving us some special information. In this case, the information is Adobe Digital Editions version. This is an Adobe uh, copyrighted, uh, 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 copy protected, I should say, version. This is just to help users see exactly where did you get it from. And here's the DOI. Now, do you have to have this Adobe Digital Editions version? No, nobody says you have to have it. This is extra, that's what the brackets are for. Extra to try to help the reader find exactly what version of the book you had. What if you have an electronic book, for example, that has no publication date? Is that possible? Well, I think the key here is anything's possible. There are many different kinds of ways to publish these days. So yeah, it's possible. What do you do? Well, no date, then you use this ND. Small n, small d, period, period, no space in there at all. So apostrophe, I mean uh, um, parentheses, N period, D period, parentheses, no space in there at all. Space here, space here, but no space inside. ND means no date. There is no date for this. Is that possible? Well, if you don't have a date, this is one way to do it. And then here is the name, Egoism and the Crisis of Western Values. And here we have Retrieve From because this is online. That's one reason it doesn't have a date. I found it very annoying that there is a lot of information online that actually does not have a publication date. I do try to look very carefully though. Try your best to find a date if you can. And if you can't, well then, and D.
book chapters of print book versions. So here we have, again, the author, last name, first name, middle name, the year, period. Now we have the name of the chapter, Philosophy and the Science of Subjective Well-Being, period. In. So it's going to be inside of another book. Now look carefully. M-E. You see that? This is something to watch out for. Be careful. This is the first name. This is the last name. Isn't that weird? We often reverse that, don't we? For example, right here. Abram is the last name, the family name, the surname. And here's the first name. But here we don't do that. How can we know that that's different? How can we tell? Because when you have a comma in names, that means you've reversed them. So if we look back here, clear this off. Abram, comma, you see the comma? If you have another name after the comma, that means that the name has been reversed. The last name has been put first. This is very difficult for non-native speakers to get used to, or people whose language doesn't put the name, last family name first, or puts the family name first on purpose, as in Chinese, for example. So this is a real problem for people to understand. You got to pay attention to that. But here we don't have that. We just have M, and there's no comma, Eid. So what does this mean? That means that the M is the first name, and the Eid is the family name, or the surname, or the last name. Then we have an ampersand, because there's two editors, R, J, Larson. Who is R, J, Lar Larson? Maybe his name is Ron, J, Larson. So first name, middle name, last name, and these are editors, so we say, E-D-S with a period, and then we have the name of the overall book, and then we have the pages of the chapter, and then we have a period, and then we have the location, the city, and if it's in the United States, the state, New York, comma, New York. This is the American way to write the state with a colon, no space before, one space after, and then the publisher, Guilford Press. Usually this information about the address and the details of the publisher. The address may be in the UK, it could be in Hong Kong, it could be in China. So it's every country is different how they write that. In the United States has many different states and they have different abbreviations. How do you do it? Check inside the front page. The front one or two pages of the book should have what you need. Oh, I should say something here. A lot of students are going to tell me, yeah, Professor Warden, but uh, like, I don't have the book. I couldn't find the book. And my answer is, if you can't find the book, you can't cite it. You cannot do that. We talked about that in the last lesson. That is that secondary source. And you really have to avoid that. You can only cite the things you have read, the things you've actually seen on screen or read or held in your hand or found in the library. And you can use any excuse you want, but I've been in many dissertations and I've asked, where did you get this citation from? Did you read this book? And the student says, well, I couldn't find the book. And my response is, if you couldn't find the book, how can you write it in your dissertation? You don't know what that person really said, what that person really wrote. So, yeah, don't tell me you can't find this information because you don't have the book. That is a poor excuse. If you can't find it, don't use it. How about a reference book? That is a book that's not really like a book with regular uh, articles, chapters that are articles written by different people, but rather it's a collection of work, but it's not a collection of articles. And one example would be like dictionaries, right? Dictionaries are these collections of work. There's not a dictionary that one person works on. Many people work on it, and it has many different parts to it, but it's not individual articles, and each chapter is not written by one person. However, the overall book is written or supervised by an editor. So that's a bit of a special case. Vandenbaugh 
comma, so this is last name, first name, middle name. And here we have editor to tell us that's the editor. So this is just like before. Here is the year, and then here is the name, APA Dictionary of Psychology. And then here is the location, colon, and here is the publisher, American Psychological Association. So what's the difference here between this and what we looked at earlier with chapters in the book? Well, the biggest difference is that we don't have individual papers or authors that are individual. We just have editor. There's no authors involved. So that's a little bit of a different case. Very common. How about some information that's online? But it's not really like an article by one person, but again, it's some kind of collection. Well, here we can say that, uh, well, here we have an example of an author, actually. So Graham is the author. This was published in 2005. Behaviorism is the title. And what is it inside? It's inside of something that's edited by E. N. Zolta, editor. And that thing it's inside is called the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. And that has a date of 2007 where the edition, ED, APA has defined ED as being edition. And it was retrieved from this address. The boy, that's getting a little bit complicated, isn't it? But that's an online source that somebody has written and it's inside another container. So, okay, that kind of makes some sense. How about an entry in an online reference work, but there's no author, there's no editor. In other words, you go online, you find it, but you cannot find the editor's name, you cannot find the author's name. Well, here's a perfect example. Merriam-Webster's Online Dictionary. Retrieve from. What do we have up here for the author? We don't have an author. In fact, what we do is, this is the topic we were looking for, and it's a specific word, heuristic, heuristic. So in this case, we have the word heuristic because we looked it up in the dictionary, in Webster's dictionary, and now we need to reference it. Because in our research paper, somehow we said something about heuristic, and we used the Webster's dictionary to give us some information, or define the word, for example. So in that case, we went ahead and we don't have an author, we don't have an editor, we just put the main part, the main thing that we looked up, heuristic. ND means no date because we can't find a date for the dictionary. In Merriam-Webster's online dictionary, it is the 11th edition, so that's helpful. And it was retrieved from this location here. In fact, you can see the word heuristic at the end. That's how the system knows to draw that from the database. So, there you go. Those are some interesting examples and possibilities.